guys. Welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. And before we get into the video today, uh, we're going to throw an Amazon affiliate link down below. Uh, this is for Loctite 380, which is a, a product we're using in this video to attach turkite to cast iron. Uh, now, that's not the only use. It can be used to... Uh, I've glued uh, scales on a table saw right down to the table, a steel, uh, steel scale. Uh, equipment labels. Uh, I've bonded carbide to the bottom of a, uh, a little sled that I use on the surface plate. I've, you know, I've done quite a bit of things with it. So it'll, it's good for bonding steel to steel, steel to cast iron, stainless steel to cast iron, obviously turkite to cast iron. Uh, it's got a lot of uses. Read the instructions carefully. It's tricky to work with, and it has some pretty unique characteristics. Uh, one of which is it uh, humidity in the air accelerates the drying time. So be warned about that. Read the instructions and know what you're getting up, up against. But uh, Loctite 380, recommended by Robin Renzetti, also known as Black Max. All right, um, affiliate link below, and uh, let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. I'm here today with Phil, and he's from Almost Machining. If you don't subscribe to him, shame on you. Get over there. Phil, thanks for coming out today. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we're going to uh, do some turkite work. I've never done it before. Um, we did a little bit the day of my Christmas party. I know we were crammed on time, but uh, today we're going to finish the rest of the turkite work and maybe do a little bit of scraping too. Um, but we're going to take you along for the ride. I don't see a whole lot of coverage on YouTube on this. Not so this, no, this is a pretty pretty good subject, I think. Uh, I try not to redo stuff that other people have covered, you know. I can only watch so many vice tramming videos myself. <laughs> uh, so it's there are, some of those are pretty hard to watch. But uh, today we're going to do some turkite work and some scraping. I'm new to scraping, and Phillips uh, been working on it pretty steady. You know, you've got some projects at home. I do. Uh, you got that surface grinder from Mark, M Mike O'Connor. Yep. Uh, Metal Master over on Instagram. Go sub to him. Um, but, uh, and that's a old Boyer Schultz auto step. Yep, full, full auto. Full hydraulic, you know. And I knew of their existence, but I, I had never seen one in person. So it was pretty cool to see that. But that thing was clapped, wasn't it? It's, it's, it needs some work. A yeah, lot of work. A lot of scraping. So uh, follow him on Instagram, too. He's almost machining over on Instagram. And he's posting updates on that machine, too. So. All right, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna we got to get some chrome strips off of here. Show you what we got to make, and uh, we're gonna take you along for the ride. Okay, now we brought you in a little closer, and you can see the work we've already completed. And again, we didn't have a lot of time. We were doing it a little bit of it right before the Christmas party. So we got these two uh, strips replaced. We initially measured the original chrome strips, um, and what you know, the thickness, and we got within two thousandths of the thickness of this chrome strip. Uh, next up, we're going to replace this chrome strip. So we're going to pull this out and replace that with turkite as well. Now, this is turkite B, and it's locked down with, uh, or, or glued down with Loctite 380. Uh, basically, we just put this, this turkite cuts very easily, and we put it in the in the shear, uh, sheet metal shear, and just it just went through it real nice. Now, the reason I replaced it in the first place I don't really, I'll try to get the camera in on that. Right here, you can probably see some discoloration. And on the back side, you can see a kind of a stain. You can see here where we lifted the chrome off, but then it's kind of stained from here on out. What happened is, is it delaminated and it lifted up and, there, and debris got behind there. And the table was actually lifting when it got to that side. Uh, this is out at the extreme right-hand side of the uh, saddle. So as the table came out to the right side, it would actually lift, and it was measurable by a couple thousandths, which is, on a surface grinder, that's huge. And you can see some discoloration there where some stuff got in there and uh, actually kind of, you know, uh, scored or ran hard against that chrome. And uh, it, was, it was a bad situation overall. So we replace both chrome strips here with turkite. Uh, next up, we're going to pull this chrome strip um, and clean it. Uh, give it a give it a scuff so the, the glue's got something to bite into. You're probably going to uh, just uh, a Rolock wheel with a red Scotch Brite and just put a put a quick finish on it. 
and clean it with alcohol and glue down a and make another turkite strip there. So that's our uh, that's our objective for today. And then we can work on the table and getting it fitted. And uh, we, we played with the scraping on this. We, we, we reinstalled the table and got a wear pattern. And this, this stuff scrapes really nice, really easy. So this is my first time scraping, but Phil's teaching me a couple things. All right, but that's the reason for doing this. This surface grinder was all but unusual. Okay, well now it's time to, to pull the original chrome strip. And these, where, where it's bonded, it's bonded down really good. And I got already got under a corner and popped it and got it ready to go. And we're just kind of taking a putty knife and getting in there and uh, breaking that bond to the original chrome strip. Uh, well, yeah, when it bonds, it bonds. When it doesn't, it's pretty uh, disastrous. So we're just kind of working our way along there and popping that chrome strip up or work our way along. We're, we're trying not to damage the chrome strip, bend it really hard or anything because we're going to be using it as a pattern so we're just kind of trying to take it easy on this uh, on this chrome strip You can hear it delaminating in sections. And that's it. And there's your chrome strip there. And you can see the bonding that was there. It was glued down pretty good. And what's interesting about this is there's actual oil return grooves under the chrome plated ways. These are actually drain holes that go down to the uh, saddle ways underneath so it this thing oils top down and it's a full oil to waste system it doesn't it doesn't recirculate so I thought that was interesting when I first saw it all right so now we've got a clean pattern to uh, 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 make our turkite with okay real quick I thought I'd show you the turkite this is it here it's like a giant piece of plastic this is the uh, glue up here in the back and that is the bearing side over there. So we've got plenty of material to do what we got to do. And we're going to use the old chrome strip as a pattern. Uh, literally, this stuff will cut with a pair of scissors. It'll cut with a razor knife. It'll cut with, uh, I'm, we're going to cut a long strip on the uh, shear, on the sheet metal shear. I'm going to keep my blades nice and sharp on that machine. So uh, that's what we're going to do. But I thought I'd show it to you before we uh, get started. Okay, we got our chrome strip, and you'll notice there's holes on the end, and uh, I think they use those just for a glue capture, just so the glue would squish up. That doesn't align with anything. There's no screws that go in any in there anywhere. Uh, I'm not going to include them. I'm going to just include these uh, four oil grooves, and it is directional. It doesn't. It, this this thing's only going to fit on one way because uh, these two slots are farther apart than these two slots, so it is a directional fit. Uh, but at this point, it doesn't matter because it'll fit on the machine 
And if, uh, if it doesn't fit, we flip it over. So all I'm going to do right now is just clamp it to the table. Uh, lightly, you know, I'm just going to take that crumb strip and clamp it down to the table and mark these holes. And then from there, uh, I'm just going to use a pencil. This stuff, yeah, this stuff writes, you're going to write in this stuff real nice. All right. And we're going to take a nice sharp pencil and go around those grooves and mark those. And then I'm going to unclamp and uh, I'm going to use a leather punch. There's a, a rotating leather punch and I'm going to cut the two extreme ends of the holes with the leather punch so I get a nice rounded hole. And then I'm going to put the, uh, put the chrome strip back on and razor knife the flats to connect the two holes. So uh, this stuff's pretty tough. It's, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like punching leather, you know, it's uh, you got to kind of work your punch a little bit. After you come down, you just kind of rotate your material on there. And that's your uh, and your little slug. You got to kind of pop it out of there with your fingernail. But you end up with you end up with a pretty clean hole. It's not bad. There it goes. So that's what you ended up with right there. Hopefully you can see that, what I'm showing you there. So I'm going to go through and pop all these holes and then get it back into the, uh, back up against the original and uh, um, cut the flats. Okay, well we got our holes punched as, you, as seen there. All we have to do is connect the lines and I'm just going to use the original as a uh, template. And we're going to make sure our holes line up. Where's that boy get his energy? I'm just going to move my clamps in between each one here. I'm just going to put a clamp on each side of the uh, chrome strip. On that strip right there, and we're going to go on each side of it, and just take that razor knife and connect the two lines, or connect the two holes. And that's as easy as that right there. Okay, well we got the turkite cut and we've got we're reasonably clean on this surface here. Uh, we just need to go over it one more time. We need to clean the back of the turkite with alcohol and the machine with alcohol. And the thing is, is we had to put in these little plastic strips. Um, when we pulled the chrome way out, uh, we did notice that this passage was blocked because the way surface passes over there. So we made these little plastic pieces to go in there and after we glue down we'll be able to slip this out the end and make sure that passage stays clear. Now that oiling hole is a drain hole from this upper way gets into this trough and then rolls down that uh, groove to that passage that feeds the lower ways of the saddle. So that's how we're going to keep the glue out of that passage on both sides. It's got it over there and we're going to be gluing down the turkite with a sled which is uh, inspired by Mr. Robin Renzetti. A very curved uh, sled uh, that you can bear down on, roll it in, and squish all your glue out and try to get a nice even surface. So this is a tool we made uh, 
at Robin Renzetti's recommendation. So uh, this is what we used in the back and it seemed to work pretty good. So we're going to give that a try and uh, special thanks to Robin. If you don't uh, subscribe to him, uh, you got no business watching me. Go over and subscribe, subscribe to Rob Renz. All right, let's uh, let's get into this. Let's go. Yep. Where you need to be. Yep. Oop. Yeah. We're buckled in the center. It's okay. Bring it on down. It was not one to. No. That shit started to haze over. Do you want to put some pressure on it right here? I can push down. Well, I know we can push down, but I can put a clamp there. I got like an F clamp we can put there. No, it's gonna it's gonna do its thing. I'm just gonna clamp on that. Yeah, it should clamp on that uneven surface. Let's get one started on the other side. Does it feel okay? Hmm. That's why Robin, I think, was um, you know, running like a bead, and then pushing, running the bead. I saw what he was doing. Is it rocking it or? No, oh, it's. Oh yeah, you're. Yeah, I'm rocking it back. That's no good. Hold on, let me get it right here. Down here in front a little bit. There. Nice. There, she's bearing there. Okay. I'm going to move this one out here too. I just, I just need to put some pressure on it. It's exactly what it needs. Right there. Nope. Okie dokie. That's it. Go drink some coffee. Okay, well, we got this stuff glued on. And after we got done with it, you know, we put it down and it started setting up over on the left as we were getting ready to roll it over. And we actually had to take the razor blade and, and just use it as a squeegee, scrape it off, and work a little faster. Now, it's cold and humid today. And so, being the backwards person we are, or backwards people we are, me and uh, Phil went and, you know, we read the instructions on it and uh, on the Loctite. And this stuff uh, is accelerated by humid air and it's cold and humid today. So there's a lot of moisture in the air. The best thing I could have done is close up the shop and uh, run the HVAC for a little while and dry this place out uh, to give us some more working time. But uh, moisture in the air will accelerate it. And it was completely different from when we glued up the back. We had plenty of time to work with it. Out here, we didn't have a lot of time to work with it. So we had to just glue it, spread it, flip it, squeegee it, and get the, uh, we got a weight on there with some clamps. And the cylinder is retracted. I'm about centered there. Feel go over that labyrinth. Okay. I am in the groove. How much movement do you want? Let's pull it on. Are you are further on down that end? Let's take it that no, way. No, let me see. We're we're pretty equal. We're pretty centered right now. So let's go all the way to your end, and then all the way. To my all end. the way? Yeah. I thought you just wanted a slight well, movement. Let's, let's go to. Are you are you are you off the side? I'm right even with it right okay. now. There. Pull it? Yep. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, the tour guide came up. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got bluing on my hands. I should have gloved up. All right, let me move the camera closer. All right, everywhere you see blue is where we touched off. All we did was move it to the extreme here and to the extreme here. This saddle is about probably eight inches wider than the actual table. So when it's when it's at rest centered, you know the table's here, but we only moved it far enough to go to here and here just to get it out to the outer extremes. Now we can see where all our high spots are. I can see evidence of scraping there. That's, yeah, that's from... That's all the high spots in the scraping. Mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, pretty good. And the back's decent. This is not bad for a first rubbing, I don't think. W what do you think? No. Uh -uh. We'll, we'll bring these down, the big high spots, and then as we're not going to add any more ink, we'll just continue to smear the ink so the ink will get lighter and lighter right. as we work. It's a, little, it's a little heavy on the ink still. Well, that's, yeah. and that's the meniscus of the ink, you know, mm -hmm. flaring out and all that. Okay, well, it's uh, it's scraping time. I'm not comfortable using a power scraper yet, especially not on this stuff. Uh, so we're just going to hand scrape it, right? Yeah, we're just going to hand pull scrape. Pull scrape. Uh -huh. uh, that's a new one to me. So bring your tool over. Let's have a look at that. So I just have a, a high-speed steel blade. Instead of trying to use oh, we're not using carbide? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a high-speed steel blade, and I'll put that in the holder if we need to. And that's what he's doing it with right there. It says HSS on there. So that's a piece of high speed steel that looks like it's been silver soldered to a... That's for a power scraper though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean we could use it. And when you pull scrape, you're going to do what kind of so movement? Stand it almost vertical. Oh, and pull backwards? Mm -hmm. Yep. Go for it. Give it a pull. Put it in there and give it a pull. Yeah, so you're just removing little bits of material. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to get the camera in closer. So I want them to see what we're doing. But yeah, you're not removing much material at all. No, it's... It's just very little bit right there. I gotta get gloves on, I'm getting that blue junk all over <laughs> me. More radius. Okay, I got you zoomed in on this piece, and from what Phil says, we're gonna hold it under 90 degrees, or that's 90 degrees, we're gonna hold it under 90 degrees, and we're gonna pull. That's what these calls it pull scraping. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Don't overlap it. Don't overlap it. Yes, sir. There you go. You don't right. need to be long either. Nice. This is actually pretty easy. A lot easier than the last stuff we were scraping. All right, should I cross it up? Uh, cross it up this way? No, let's not. Let's just, um, we'll do, keep the same direction this time. We'll see where it's at, and then we'll come back the other way. And go this way? Because mm -hmm, it's, I don't know how much we're pulling each time. Okay. And just everywhere I see blue, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll set an indicator up right now and we'll see what, how much it's taking off, right? I don't know. You want to use that little stair with the pinpoint I got? Hinge. Yeah, it's hinging dead center. Okay, this is going to be about our third uh, drop in. I'll take this in. Oh. Your hinge is out here, mm -hmm. and then what'll be this way? Same, mm -hmm. that out there. So our, our hinge points are like here and here. We need to move them out. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know are these handles on the thirds, or where where are they at? I don't know if they're on the thirds. Okay, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. What we could do is we could put the table back on and compare it, but the table is still the table was low to the plate in the center, which, which which would match the wear of the machine. So if we put it back on and this is still high, it's going to repeat again. Yeah, I think surface grinders, they wear like in a bow, mm -hmm. high in the center, low on the end. So we're, we're going to be fighting that the whole time. Just so, for a little while. For sure. All right, yeah, but we're spreading out. I can see where we're spreading out. Mm -hmm. Move my little scraper. You know, I'll start working over here and you start working over there. You get rid of all the little bluey marks. But I can definitely see the thing moving, which is cool. With that, 
that chrome strip that yeah, wasn't moving much? No, that chrome wasn't doing anything. So on these machines, this part that we're scraping on right now is thicker. Now, I don't know if that's the norm across all Boyer Schultz grinders, but the no, one yeah, I have is if, the same. If you're going to do a Boyer Schultz, you need to measure your uh, uh, your chrome ways. And an, an interesting thing on this is the rear ways were a different thickness than this front flat way. So the V-way had a thinner material than this front one. And that was the main screw up over Christmas is we got the back one done and uh, uh, then we discovered we didn't have the right material for the front so we, uh, we had to halt that operation and get on with our Christmas party. A little thicker and you can go down to lighter and lighter and lighter, right? Yep. And it improves and improves and improves. Well, we said this was fast. What's it? You want to check the hinge? Yeah. Oh, we're way, we're way over here now. That moved a lot. Right, about here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to put some more in it because it's. We put it on the other way today, this mm -hmm. time, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, you got the scale forward. You're in, you're in the groove. Where are we? Engine about here. Okay. Engine about here. So it's definitely moving out. For sure. Right now. Yeah. It's way easier with two people. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, well, we, we've done a bunch of scraping. We got this pattern all the way out with the granite. You know, we got it so it bears out all the way to the edges. And now we're going to go back to the table. And we got the table blued and this reasonably clean so we can get a get a pattern off of that. So now we're gonna see what that what that tells us. We you need to come to me a little bit. There you go. Okay. You got a room for your fingies? There we go. No, you're not going in. It's you. Go, go towards the foot. There you go. Okay. No. We're in the lane. Okay. Go so your way? Okay, go to me till it we're just to the edge. Right there. Okay. Just barely to the edge. Now I'll shove it to you. You ready? Uh-huh. Got it? A little more. Okay. Okay. Yep. You ready to pull it? Yep. Ah, barely got room for my fingers. And there on the back V way you can see the bearing between the between the blue and the green. All the way, but we're we're actually hitting. This needs some work here. It needs it needs work for it to settle into that V way. Nice bearing all the way across here, mm -hmm. from here to here. You know, we just got a little bit more to do out to get it out to the edges. So I think that's pretty good. Let's scope out a little bit, and that bell ringing you heard was lunch. So we're gonna go eat. So much easier with two people. There we are. Scrape our blade. Okay. Okay, you can come to me. <laughs> I'm in the groove. All right. See you in a bit there. Okay. Going to you. Okay. All right. We'll go back. Sure. I would think we'd want to go through its full travel. But One more time this way. Not yet. Not yet? Not full travel? Okay. You ready to pull? A little bit more. To you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now I get to you. Ready? Yep. So we've got some good bearing on there. We're getting, we're getting closer. We're done with the granite straight edge. And after you've got one surface flat, then you get the, uh, then you get the table flat and use the table as a pattern maker, if that's, uh, you know, use that as a master so you can fit the table and take readings off of the table off onto the turkite. Okay, so we've been at it for several hours and we've, after we got the table straight, we we're happy with the granite, uh, granite straight edge on the table. Then we bring the, use the table as a master, bring the table over, get a rubbing and you can see we've got bearing 
all the way down to here and we're oh we got this last little corner little valley here which I'm not too concerned about and a couple little light patches there but we're we've got her worried that's for sure and uh, this is time consuming I don't know whether you guys can see this I'm just looking through a tiny little viewfinder on my on my little camcorder here so I don't know whether you can see the actual uh, the bluing from the transfer but I thought I'd bring you in for a uh, one of the transfers, uh, we, we're, I'm not going to bring you in for every single one, you know, it, we've been doing this all day. Scrape, 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 transfer, scrape, 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 transfers, over and over, it's very repetitive. And uh, this would be a six hour video, and I don't think you guys want to sit there through that. But uh, we got her worried for sure, uh, we're, we might be closing it up for the night, maybe get one more scraping session in, and another uh, bluing transfer and see how we do. Uh, but it just keeps getting better and better, and we can see our pattern just spreading out and, and all the load just uh, moving out across the entire thing. So uh, we're happy with it, you know, we're, we're definitely making progress. I don't know if you can see in here or in here, there's some clear spots, but I thought I'd bring you in and show you our progress. Okay, after a couple more rounds, we're getting down to the home stretch, and I do mean the home stretch. My little void over here is starting to shrink. Got a little tiny patch down here. A couple of voids over here, but I think we got it really worried. I'm hoping you guys can see all the contrast we got here. Maybe I'll grab the camera, go handheld, and let you take a look at it. Okay, I'm hoping you can see the all our points of contact there. All those blue spots are everywhere that our table bears, and the green is the natural turkite from underneath. So we've gone along and pointed all those. My divot there at the end went away. I had a kind of a little pond right there that I was fighting. The rear V-way is looking good. And we're ready to oil this thing. We're going to do one final cleaning. I'm going to get the bluing off. Uh, we're ready to uh, do one final cleaning. We're going to pipe cleaners down all the oil galleys and uh, give it the manual oiling and put it together. Run it. Can you glue this? Huh? Blue this. Blue it. Blue it. Yeah, I blew it off. I didn't blue it with bluing, but I blew it with an air hose. It's clean. Alright, we're all coated with whey oil. This thing should run like grease lightning now, right? I don't know. Nothing else seems out of ordinary. Here's another sleeve. Let's go. Wait a minute. Get that ball in the socket. <sighs> Mike in? Oh my god, that was really smooth. <laughs> okay, we're locked in with that. How's it feel? Well, I don't know. for you with oil on it. Fire up a face converter.
Okay, so we're on the home stretch. The table's running hot, straight, and normal. We actually reground the table. And you probably noticed I got my mag chuck on there upside down. It's kind of weird having to take the camera and go back and forth. Yeah. And now we're, we're straightening out the bottom of the chuck. That's a new, uh, that's new to me, uh, Walker Ceramic uh, Ceramax. It's a, it's a pretty nice magnet. Uh, I was having trouble with my old magnet uh, releasing the parts, so I went ahead and eBayed a uh, used uh, Walker. You don't even want to know what those things cost you. But machines run really good, really smooth. Uh, I can't believe how smooth the traverse is on this thing. Uh, next up to spindle, I guess you can hear it. it's not running too great. Uh, this spindle is quite noisy, but uh, uh, thanks to Phil, you know, Phil's here helping me out, and uh, we probably got, we probably put in, what, 10 hours yesterday? Yeah, 10 hours. So between the two of us, we got 20 man hours into a Turkite project, so that's about what you can expect, and we were, we weren't screwing around yesterday, just sitting around drinking beer and working, uh, we were actually just, just working. Work. Uh, not a single drop of beer was uh, harmed in this video. All right, so I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, that was my first experience with scraping and with turkite. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results and pretty amazed how smooth this machine runs. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Phil, thanks, thank you. Guys. All right, we'll thanks. see you later.